So hello and welcome to this EMR rounds and I saw this patient a couple of days back. Uh, he was a 30 year old male presenting with a growth on the left eye for the past three months. Okay, for the past three months and um, no other significant complaints from this patient. No irritation, no itching, nothing was there. Just three months, the growth was there, kind of slowly progressed. Okay, and no other associated symptoms as well. Now, this is the actual clinical photograph of this patient. You can see this is like a small lesion uh, measuring around 2 mm into 1 mm, uh, which is 1 mm from the, from the temporal limbus. So, it is a interpalpebral conjunctival lesion, okay, presenting on the temporal area. And I saw a kind of like a small vessel, you know, is, is passing. This vessel was more prominent and I was concerned. I'll tell you why. And the surface of the lesion was kind of gritty. It was, it was not a very smooth surface. It didn't look like a, a you know, kind of regular, but there was like more of an irregularity was noted. Uh, more of a gritty or, or irregular, uh, you know, different shine was seen on the, on the surface of the lesion. So I was a bit concerned and I sent to cornea. So in cornea, they have diagnosed as a pingicula, just a pingicula with keratinization. But why should I send this patient to cornea? If this patient is going to be just pingicula, why am I sending to cornea? The reason why I sent to cornea is because I suspected a very important lesion, just very easy to miss. There is going to be ocular squamous, ocular surface squamous neoplasia, OSSN. Okay. Now, to put things into perspective, any conjunctival lesion can be either pigmented or non-pigmented. Okay. So, we'll quickly talk about pigmented lesions, which can be either benign, pre-malignant and malignant. We all know malignant is going to be the malignant melanoma. The pre-malignant ones are going to be PAM, primary acquired melanocytosis, conjunctival nevus, nevus of ota. We always see conjunctive nevus, but they are very, very uh, rarely they transform into malignant lesions. So, nothing to worry with this. But nevus of ota is something to be of concern. The benign lesions are going to be either congenital and acquired. The acquired can be the muscara deposits, what you guys put, can mimic like a benign acquired pigmented lesion. The congenital ones are going to be the congenital fractal and congenital melanosis and melanocytoma. So this is not our discussion today. Our discussion today is non-pigmented because this villain is going to come under the non-pigmented lesion. So the non-pigmented lesions are going to be benign, pre-malignant and malignant. The benign lesions are going to be again papillomas, the epibulbar choristomas, which include both dermoid and lipodermoid. The third is going to be the pyogenic granuloma. But the pre-malignant and malignant lesions are going to be our concern. The pre-malignant lesion is going to be called as carcinoma in situ or conjunctival or corneal intraepithelial neoplasia. Carcinoma in situ also called as conjunctival or corneal intraepithelial neoplasia. The malignant ones are going to be the squamous cell carcinoma, Kaposi's sarcoma, lymphoma, and an aggressive variant of squamous cell carcinoma that is going to be the mucoepidermoid carcinoma. You can see I've given two ticks here for this and for this, which means these two together is what we call as an ocular surface squamous neoplasia, which means it's a spectrum of lesions which are either pre-malignant or malignant. The malignant ones are going to be the squamous cell carcinoma, which is invasive. The pre-malignant is going to be the non-invasive or the carcinoma in situ or conjunctival or corneal intraepithelial neoplasia. So you have two varieties or two uh, extremes of OSSN. This pre-malignant can transform into malignant. That is going to be the important thing to consider. Now we'll discuss OSSN in brief under three headings. One is the words histopathology, the clinical features and the treatment part of it. As far as histopath is concerned, you have three stages. One is going to be the conjunctival epithelial dysplasia, which involves only the basal epithelium. Second is going to be the carcinoma in situ or the conjunctival intraepithelial neoplasia, which involves the full thickness epithelium. But when this tumor is going to break the basement membrane, it's going to invade the stroma. The stromal invasion is what signifies the squamous cell carcinoma, which is the malignant variety. Okay, this you can see the tumorous cells is involved the entire length. It's a stromal invasion of the tumorous cells. That is squamous cell carcinoma. So, what are clinical features as far as OSSN is concerned? 
more than 50 years okay uh, the the uh, implied associations or causative agents are going to be human papilloma virus uv radiations and some people say that abnormal limbal cell limbal stem cell abnormalities can also cause can also uh, you know bring out this oasis in, in these patients as far as symptoms are concerned okay a patient will complain of just a growth which can be painless sometimes it can be painful it can be associated with redness there could be bleeding also so presence of any other symptoms which indicates uh, discomfort to the patient in terms of a pain itching irritation bleeding indicates again risk of malignancy as far as signs are concerned there are three basic morphological forms of OSN one is going to be the gelatinous leukoplakic and papillomatous what is gelatinous it's like a soft gelatin smooth surface leukoplakic means white papillomatous means which will appear like a papillae which we see in the allergic conjunctivitis and important thing to note is that uh, these three forms are seen in both pre-malignant and malignant OSSN and you won't see much of a difference between them okay which means clinically speaking both the pre-malignant and the malignant lesions can appear the same that is important thing to consider now, this is the picture showing the papillomatous growth as you can see the lesions have a typical papillae like pattern what you see on uh, allergic conjunctivitis on eversion of the upper lid and this is going to be the soft gelatinous growth the third is going to be the leukoplakic lesion okay now these are two more pictures to show that this is going to be the soft gelatinous growth which stains with rose bengal a rose bengal staining will help you to facilitate the identification of the coronal lesions better and note you may think this is a pterygium this looks very much like a pterygium like an inflamed pterygium maybe but this is a leukoplakic lesion this is a leukoplakic lesion which is similar to pterygium okay and you can see this feeder vessel here this feeder vessel indicates there is a possible malignancy this feeder vessel indicates a possible malignancy now this feeder vessel might appear like a congested blood vessel what you see in your episcleritis or what you might see in inflamed pterygium or a pingicula but this feeder vessel indicates that this vessel is supplying the tumor and the tumor has invaded the underlying structures this is the corneal intraepithelial neoplasia where you can see the translucent granular gray epithelial borders and these edges are very characteristic fimbriated or pseudopodia like extensions which stain better with rose bengal again so quickly going to the treatment aspect you have three treatment options one you can give a surgical extension which is going to be the treatment of choice and there are intraoperative adjuvants apart from excising uh, along with excising you can also give a cryotherapy you can give alcohol these are introp adjuvants okay but the exciting treatment is going to be the presence of or using the topical chemotherapy which can be used primarily as an alternative to surgical excision especially in small tumors or you can give after or before surgical excision okay you give before surgical excision to reduce the tumor load there are three options you have interferon alpha 2b mitomycin c and 5 fluorouracil you might have heard about mitomycin c and 5 fluorouracil being used in glaucoma filtering surgeries but the risk is pre using of mmc and 5 fu can lead on to limbal stem cell deficiency and ocular surface toxicity and that is why whenever you give these two drugs you be very very careful closely monitor and and make sure that you prevent systemic absorption by using punctal plugs surgical excision always excise with 2 to 4 mm clear margins and employ no touch technique which means you should not cause any inadvertent or careless seeding of tumor cells into the normal area therefore incisional biopsy is contraindicated in these patients this is a very very important table from aao please pause the phone or the video and take a screenshot of this table very important table this table clearly shows that you have the surgical excision you have three important topical chemotherapy agents surgical excision depends upon where the tumor is involved it's going to be corneal or conjunctival or limbal or it's going to be stromal bed depending upon where it is involved you have to go for the specific treatment 
as far as the topical chemotherapy is concerned interferon alpha 2 beta is more preferred because it is safe you can use it for a longer periods versus mmc and 5 fu both have to be monitored very closely uh, mmc is less irritant whereas 5 fluoroacetyl is going to be more irritant note that and always whenever you instill mmc and 5 fluoroacetyl use punctal occlusion sometimes people even put in punctal plugs to prevent systemic absorption as well as to prevent punctal stenosis in these patients the interesting thing about using mmc and 5 fluoroacetyl is that you have to give the patient a drug holiday okay you have to give in cycles but make sure that in one cycle one week you give the patient mmc four times a day for one week then next week you don't give the patient mmc at all so it's one week on one week off this is what you call as a one cycle you can give three to four cycles as such so give these two drugs in cycles with a drug holiday with one week off note that very very important so what is the important message or messages i want to give to you guys never miss these lesions in the opd because most often you will see patients coming to you with pterygium uh, very easy to identify is pterygium but sometimes atypical pterygium pictures if if the pterygium is going to be large irregular elevated think of oss and have a high degree of suspicion in these patients so never miss these lesions that's the most important message i want to give and if these lesions are going to be elevated acquired progressive extensive lesions and if they are fixed to the underlying tissues and if they have feeder vessels always please think of malignancy or pre malignant ossn lesions and as always you will know any patients especially if they are young presenting with any malignancies think of an immunocompromised state or hiv status so that is going to be the three messages i want to give for this short emr round so thanks a lot for staying with me Take care. Bye-bye.